Proud colors flying high. Boots on the ground. Means one thing. Texas A&M is getting ready to play football. The fighting Texas Aggie band and the Corps of Cadets pass the reviewing stand. Reveille is all set. It's a big game. Nebraska is here. Can the Aggies keep it going? Welcome to Saturday Night Football, presented by Southwest Airlines. You are looking live at a sold-out Kyle Field in College Station, Texas, where the Nebraska Cornhuskers have come for a final Big 12 visit, and the stakes tonight could not be higher. Nebraska one win away from a Big 12 North Championship, but the red-hot Texas A&M Aggies are riding their first four-game win streak since 2006. The yell leaders have got it all whipped up. This could be a record-breaking crowd tonight. They have added seats down on the track. They're expected to soar past 90,000. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Kirk Herb Street. I'm Brett Musburger. We're going to have some kind of excitement here tonight. Texas A&M, Ryan Tannehill, begins the season as one of their best receivers. Now he's a starting quarterback. What an amazing story in college football this year. Texas A&M had lost three straight. Things weren't looking good. Drod Johnson, their senior, their leader at quarterback, wasn't getting it done. So they go to Ryan Tannehill, one of their top receivers, make the adjustment, put him at quarterback. This is him last year against Texas. This guy, for the last couple of years, has been a go-to guy. But he's so athletic, he's made this adjustment to an up-tempo offense, making great decisions, 10 touchdowns, only three interceptions. He'll be the key tonight against this Nebraska defense. He's got to get the ball out fast, and he might have a chance to make some plays tonight with his feet, too. Now, Herbie, I saw you down on the field with your buddy Bo Pelini, the coach at Nebraska. he got pretty good defense now. Yeah, Bo Pelini always has great defense, going back to his days as a defensive coordinator at LSU and, of course, now as a head coach at Nebraska. This is a great defense, even without Ndamukong and Sue. I really feel right now they're starting to play the best they've played all year with great confidence. They'll play a lot of man coverage, and I think the key will be, can Texas a them, get off of the man coverage, and can AM run the football against a very physical defensive front from Nebraska? You know, Herbie, when you talk about the great scenes in college football, one that belongs right near the top is right here at Aggie Land. Tonight, Texas AM against Nebraska. The senior is being introduced here. And head coach Mike Sherman waiting for a final embrace as his senior class is introduced to this crowd. They come through the core, cadets, and then the Aggies will be ready to pour out onto the field here. Terrence McCoy was number 11. He's from Midland, Texas. And here comes Gerard Johnson, number one. There will be a huge ovation when he comes out. There is the young man being introduced, so unselfish. Stands behind Ryan Tannehill, tears coming down his face. His father used to bring him here when he was a youngster. This has been the Nissan pregame shift. Kickoff for Nebraska and Texas A&M is coming up next. Home of the 12th man. And what tremendous support they have from this crowd. Beautiful night here. East Texas College Station for this football game. And you saw a picture of Mike Sherman embracing some of his seniors. Of course, he's a young man who came to the Aggies from the National Football League. 2000 to 2005, he was the head coach of Green Bay. And Bo Pelini, the coach across the way, was his linebacker's coach with the Packers from 2000 through 2002. So these two gentlemen know each other very well. Settle back, ladies and gentlemen. One of the great scenes is about to unfold. The Aggies won the toss. 
They will defer, and Nebraska will receive the opening kickoff, and we'll be underway. takes a knee. Heather Cox is the third member of our broadcast team. And uh, Heather, what about the condition of Taylor Martinez, the Nebraska quarterback? Well, Brent, last week Taylor Martinez admitted after the game that he didn't feel explosive. He didn't feel like he could make side-to-side -side cuts after being back from his first game following an ankle injury. And without him full strength, Nebraska's offense struggled. Not one play went for over 30 yards during that injury. I talked to him before the game. He said he felt about 90%. And guys, during warm-ups, he looked explosive. He looked confident. Certainly a confident that Nebraska's been waiting for. Exactly, Heather, with Roy Hello getting the first carry from scrimmage for about three yards here, and Sean Porter brings him down. It's been such a great story this year, Brent, for Nebraska. Last year, they just managed things on offense and tried to win it with defense and special teams, but you could see early that he had the explosiveness to take this offense to a different level. Remember their big win at Seattle against Washington, and the, the coaches say the bigger the stage, the tougher the atmosphere. He's one of these guys that always seems to play his best in those kind of uh, situations. We'll see if his ankle holds up. Niles Paul is out to the left of the formation, and now Martinez takes off for the first time tonight. And this will leave a third and three. Mathis making the stop, and here's the impact players for Nebraska. Yeah, Roy Hallou is kind of the, the main guy in that backfield, along with Rex Burkhead, but he has tremendous power and vision. And Niles Paul, the senior on the outside, 6'1", 220 pounds, can make things go, and will be the go-to guy tonight for Martinez on the perimeter in the passing game, a big part of Nebraska's offense. First third down of the night, they go to the Wildcat. They put Rex Burkhead to take the direct snap. And he hands it off for the first down to Hellu. So the handoff came from Burkhead to Hellu for the first down. It's a nice little wrinkle. You'd think, why would they need a Wildcat when you have Taylor Martinez? But it's just a little wrinkle, and Burkhead is kind of that, that wild card that they'll put back there. A natural athlete, played uh, some high played quarterback in high school, and he's very comfortable in that role when they give him that chance. From the wristband to his teammates. First pass is on the money for a second first down. Niles Paul, the senior from Omaha. Now, early I said that a big part of their, their game tonight will be the passing game. And the reason is there's great timing here. Paul holds on to the football. So he had some drops earlier this year. This time does a good job of focusing. And people that think Taylor Martinez can't throw, you just haven't seen enough of him throw. He's got plenty of arm strength, throws that one. And tonight, A&M's going to crowd the line of scrimmage against this running game. He's going to make some plays with his arm. Paul closing in on 500 yards. Martinez keeps it. He's got a first down and some with that speed across the 40-yard line. Trent Hunter, the safety, forced to make the stop. And sometimes when you blitz, Garrick Williams brought in on the inside. They also snuck up the safety, Trent Hunter. And Nebraska's offensive line, the execution up front, flawless. And a good job also on the outside by the wide receivers picking up a block. That time it was Niles Paul. Surlis Williams, Caputo, Henry, and DJ Jones. He'll alternate a right tackle with Marcel Jones. That's your offensive line. Play fake. Martinez going to eat it. Thought about throwing it downfield for a moment. Thought better of it. 
And he took the hit and wrapped it up rather than risk an interception. Well, Tim DeRuiter brought in a very multiple defense with him when he came over from Air Force. A 3-4 defense. They love to move around. And tonight, one of their big keys, as I said, crowding the line of scrimmage against the Nebraska running game. And also Brent slanting and moving and do a lot of different things to try to confuse not only Taylor Martinez, but also his offensive line. Michael Hodges brings Martinez down on second and ten. Quick flash, basic running play to the outside, and Hodges was there again on the completion to Kenny. It's textbook on how this AM defense is going to have to play. Gang tackle. The receiver makes a play against the defensive back. There's a linebacker to be able to make that tackle short of the first down. This time Hodges there to be able to corral him. That's a Something they've really done a good job of emphasizing here on this four-game winning streak. Tremendous effort from the Aggies' defense. Big third down. Throws it underneath for the first and ten. Catch and run, Kyler Reed. And Reed has been a weapon from that zebra spot. Brent, outstanding vision here by Taylor Martinez. First real third down situation where you knew he was going to have to throw the football. Plenty of time to be able to make the throw. But AM was disguising some coverage, putting pressure on both Martinez and his wide receivers. Great job of finding Reed, and Reed shows that he's got some speed after the catch. Martinez and the Huskers are in the red zone. They've converted both of their third downs. Now on the handoff, they come back with Halu, and they don't do much damage on first down because Lucas Patterson was there defensively for the Aggies. Talk about slanting and moving and doing a lot of different things to be able to try to find a seam. Any kind of penetration against, obviously, this defense or this offense is very important for AM. And they, uh, Patterson there, he will surprise you as a senior. Not only does he play with a high motor, he has good speed off the edge. Now, Reed, who you saw earlier, has caught four touchdown passes. Paul, only one. And the handoff to Halu. They're not going to get much out of this sweep. This is third and long. So they decided to try and go wide, and somewhat surprisingly, there were some folks who thought maybe they'd put it up on that down. Boy, Sean Porter, the outside linebacker, way to the left. Watch him hold on to that block and fight through Reed. Just a great job, and Ben Cotton as well. And there is the pursuit again from Texas A&M. Look how many jerseys you see flying in there to try to help out to slow down this running game of Nebraska. Now it's third and 12. And you can see he's bleeding from that cut. Martinez is injured. The referee has not seen it. Martinez straight back, steps away from the pressure, dumps it off, short of the first down because Burkhead couldn't quite get there against the defense. And now I see a penalty flag on that far side. In fact, there's a couple of them over there. Brent, I think Ricky Henry, the right guard, came in there trying to pick up a block, and I think his receiver was already down, and I think this is going to go against Nebraska. Be a dead ball foul. Martinez, meanwhile, was told by the referee to wipe his arm, which he did with the towel. After the play, personal foul, number 74 in the offense. 15-yard penalty, fourth down. Good call, Herbie. That was Ricky Henry, the right guard, the senior from Omaha. And Brent, you and I appreciate great effort always, but uh, in this case, you can see his receivers are, or the running back, Burkhead, is already down, and Henry hustling, just trying to make a hustle play, but he clearly runs right into Hunter and it uh, pushes back this field goal attempt. So Henry made 13 of 14 field goals. This is a 43-yarder. Down from the left hash. He's got wonderful distance and hold on, it was stopped. Prior to the snap. So even though that field goal was on the money, it doesn't count. Full start. Number 73 the offense. That is a big, penalty. big mistake. D.J. Jones. And when you're talking a 43-yard field goal, now you're talking 48. It's two in a row, Brent, to really push this back. He has hit a 52-yarder, however. Let's point that out. This is 48. Here it comes now. What a great leg. 
and he puts them ahead with a 48-yard field goal. What a weapon. Hmm. Hello, NFL. <laughs> So Nebraska puts the first points on the board here, three nothing. And in case you haven't heard, of course, if Nebraska wins tonight, they are the Big 12 North champions. There you can see that Martinez being tended to over on that sideline, suffering a cut. Judy is back deep. He's taken one all the way, and the defensive back has stopped at the 23. I want to remind everybody that if you watch one NASCAR race a year, this is the one tomorrow. Homestead, Miami, for the first time, the chase is on the line in the final race of the year. Any of these three can win it. Remember, Jimmy Johnson has won the last four. The drive for five now. He starts from the sixth position. And he will try to move forward. And meanwhile, Denny Hamlin, who's the leader, starts way back in 37th. First down and 10 now for Ryan Tannehill. And he hands it off to Cyrus Gray, the running back. And Jared Trick makes the stop. Yeah, Ryan Tannehill is, uh, we've talked a lot about him in the open and what he's meant to this offense, moving from wide receiver to quarterback and completing 69% of his passes. Has tremendous athletic ability, obviously, as a receiver. And tonight, if guys are covered, he may have to make a few plays tonight with his legs. Here comes Gray trying to swing wide, and immediately they put him in third and long. Now look for Nebraska to bring some heat against these impact players. Absolutely. Cyrus Gray, who's been red hot these last four games, averaging 20 carries and 119 yards. And Jeff Fuller, very physical receiver, number eight on the outside, about 6'4", 215 pounds. It's going to be a great battle between the A&M receivers and the physical coverage from Nebraska. Nebraska features man. Tannehill's been throwing against a lot of zone. Here comes the pressure. Here comes the blitz. Tannehill stands middle. Incomplete. Three and out. So they got the job done with that pressure from David. The linebacker brought the heat. Yes, sir. They brought both their linebackers, and Gray can only pick up one of them, and it frees up Levante David. And if Nebraska's defense gets Texas A&M into third and long situations, Nebraska will win that battle tonight. Epperson. And Coach Sherman telling not exactly satisfied about his punting game. And Burkhead, it looks like, is back deep. Sure-handed running back standing back on the Huskers' 25-yard line. Runs up on this one, lets it take the big bounce, then feels it. Breaks free and picks up seven more yards as a result of that. So a nice return on the big hop by Rex Burkhead. Nebraska coming right back. But Reveille, you got to make Looks friends with Reveille when you want to get out there early. Look, looking relaxed here. you got to get him fired up. All right, Husker's second time here, Herbie. And here comes Martinez. And uh, what are you, you see? First of all, before we get to that, let's go to Robert Flores in New York for our first update. Robert. Thanks, Brent. You keep watching Nebraska and Texas A&M. I'm watching other games across the country, starting with this Taco Bell studio update. If Oklahoma beats Baylor tonight, it sets up a winner-take-all showdown with Oklahoma State for the Big 12 South title. DeMarco Murray has two touchdowns. They lead Baylor 14-0. Missouri up on Iowa State 7-0. Brent. All right, Robert, and here Taylor Martinez keeps the ball again on the ground here, Herbie. Yeah, and Brent, I, I know that he's, he's saying the right things this week, and Heather Cox talked about how He's closer to 100%, but that's not the same Taylor Martinez that we saw before the injury. He's still favoring the ankle. And I'm not saying he still can't make some plays with, with his explosiveness, but he's not quite as explosive as he was prior to that injury, and you could see it on that last play. Brings him up for the third down. Three wide. McNeil is the slot man. Looks back. Drop incomplete. Niles Paul could not hang on. And so it is three and out the other way. Big lift here for the Aggies. Absolutely. And, and Niles Paul, who again, who's had some, some issues as far as his 
Uh, some drops, and the ball's behind him, but he's got to be able to make that catch. He's a senior, and it's a first down if Nebraska is able to convert there, if he's able to come up with that catch. So McNeil slips into 81. He'll go back. Henry hit that field goal, and he booms it up in the air. And it'll roll dead back around the 20-yard line. So the Aggies will be coming back for their second series of the night. You're watching Saturday Night Football on ABC. The Pelini family raised eight children, five boys, and here is Carl, who is older than his brother, and he's a defensive coordinator. And, Herbie, what a job they have done defensively. <laughs> it has been amazing to see this Nebraska defense get back to being the black shirts under Bo and Carl Pelini, and they play with tremendous pride. And, you know, they told us this year before the season started, this defense might be even better than last year when they finished number one in the country. And Let me interrupt you. <laughs> and Dominic and Sue coming out Dominic of that tunnel. Yeah. <laughs> I know, that's why I, I it kind of, all of us kind of stepped back when he said that. Tannehill keeps it on that read option, and this is second and long. And let's check in down below with Heather. Brent, I asked Carl what it's like coaching with his brother, and he told me he actually sometimes feels sorry for him because of their close relationship. Most head coaches don't get snapped back at as much as Bo does with Carl. He said it's the best job in college football, working with somebody that shares the exact same philosophy and the same last name. But he's not afraid to voice his opinions. He's not that worried about job security, guys. And those are full of passion, Heather, let me tell you that. As Tannehill pulls back, fires, there's that arm, and it incomplete. Had his man, Ryan Swope, and he couldn't hold on. But he does have a good-looking arm. Herbie. Oh, he's got a strong arm. And In fact, Mike Sherman, the head coach and who calls the plays, spent a lot of time in the NFL, as you know, Brandon. He says, I, I asked him, is Tannehill's future in the NFL a receiver or an athlete? He said, he's definitely a quarterback at the next level. That's where he'll get his best look. Another third down and long here for the Aggies, Brent. Yeah, they've kept him, and so... When they show it, this time they're going to try to get there with four, and they do not. And as a result, Tannehill is going to go deep. Incomplete. Double covered. And they tried to loosen it up with Jeff Fuller, the junior from McKinney, Texas. And that's a familiar name for Aggie fans. His daddy was a great defensive player who went on to the San Francisco 49ers. Yeah, Fuller is a big physical wide receiver, but 28, Eric Haig, I'm telling you, he is one of the better defensive backs slash linebackers in college football. Plays that hybrid hybrid spot for Bo Pelini. And this time, Burkhead's going to let it roll, and it takes a good Aggie roll back to the 20-yard line. So the battle of field position continues here tonight after that 60-yard punt. And a reminder that tomorrow night, catch the American Music Awards on ABC. And uh, for the first time on television, the new kids on the block and the Backstreet Boys together. All right. All right. Music's hottest <laughs> stars perform on television live. No one can predict what will happen. Is Beyonce in this show, Herbie, I, the American I, Music no, Awards? that was a couple years ago. She should be. Absolutely. 514. I know how much you're a fan of Beyonce. Absolutely. Once I learned how to pronounce her name. <laughs> Once we got off Beyonce. <laughs> really dialed you in there. <laughs> Never forget it now. So it hit a player, and that's why the ball is being moved up, and now it is only a 37-yard punt. Martinez hands it off. Now, I should say he kept it. He, he took it away. I thought he was going to give it. Look, he's See, limping on I, this I saw, island. I'm telling you, Brent, I saw this is a bad limp. He may be have to come out now. I saw it the last series. Look at this. And he's favoring this thing. And this time, holding on to that football, he, it's even turned that much more. I don't think he's going to be able to continue. Cody Green is the backup. Take a look here. Yeah, and, and it was already bothering him. And Oh, oh boy. Mercy. He oh, got boy. stepped on that time by Caputo. So the center came back and stepped on it. So Martinez is being tended to, and it means that certainly for one play, it's going to take a look here, Herbie. Is this the same ankle? 
Uh, you can see, oh, oh boy. that's up high. Yeah. So it's, that's the ankle that was injured, the right ankle, and he got him high on that in Bennett, didn't it? Yeah, Eddie Brown just pushed Caputo right back into the backfield. And, you know, when you play this kind of offense, as we've seen all over the country, these quarterbacks are out there and they get hit a lot. And, you know, it's, it's tough to be able to survive the big time level and get through an entire year. Taylor Martinez has had a sensational freshman year, but he's definitely taken some lumps along the way. But Cody Green comes in, who's a sophomore out of Texas, and he's played some football. He's the young man who played that week that Taylor Martinez missed the Iowa State game, and they're going to rely on Green control the football, but of course you got to put the ball into the hands of Roy Hallou and Rex Burkhead to try to help take some of the pressure off. That pistol formation, and they'll keep it on the ground with Hallou, and he tries to dive for the first down. Trent Hunter is the safety preventing it. He's talked about how they've got to be able to rely on some of the other weapons and Hulu who's got outstanding vision and great power is able to pull away from Michael Hodges and get up close to that first down to give Green a chance here. the fullback in front of him. Picks up the first down for the Huskers to the 45-yard line across midfield as Martinez continues to receive treatment on the bench. This is where that experience that Green was able to pick up in that Iowa State game can come in to help him. And, and you know, if you're Sean Watson, the offensive coordinator from Nebraska, things don't change drastically it, the, with the exception of now you realize, hey, we have a three to nothing lead. We could, could still run our offense. Let's not maybe take as many chances and still rely on our defense to be able to win this football game. Quick pitch to the outside, basically a run play. And the Aggies were ready, led by Terrence Frederick, the corner who came up on Brandon Kenny. And if you're Texas A&M, Brent, you're thinking, OK, let's tighten up coverage out on the wide receivers. And let's definitely take away the ability of Roy Hallou and Rex Burkhead to hurt us. And let's err on the side of making the quarterback, Cody Green, now make plays. And there's Tim DeRuder, outstanding defensive coordinator. They've got to, A&M's got to try to take away Hallou, put the game into the hands of this quarterback, Cody Green. back on it was Ben Cotton the tight end saved a critical turnover at midfield if he was able to hang on the umpire is down there in the middle of the crew you know the tug of war breaks out when a ball is loose like that I believe a penalty flag came flying so the big 12 crew down there Sorting it out right now. The Greg Burks, Scott Campbell, and now two more flags come flying. We got yellow all over the 50-yard line. Brent, what a great, great play by Lucas Patterson. I think it's a dead ball foul uh, that's going to come up here against Nebraska. But watch 77 Patterson. He gives a look to Green like I'm committing down to the run, and he's reading Patterson. And at the last second, he comes back after Cody Green. Completely fooled him, and that's why the ball went up into the air. The confusion that was developed by Lucas Patterson on Cody Green on the mesh point. Now, Pelini jumped all over Cotton. He kicked somebody late in that pile. As he was coming off the field. There are two fouls on the play. Personal foul, number 81 of Nebraska. That's Cotton. 15-yard penalty. Dead ball on sportsmanlike, number 81 in Nebraska. Wow. This is a 15-yard penalty for down. There's the look at Pelini. And they're getting him right off the field now. This is when they're facing. There's where he yeah. kicked back. Yeah. That's when the umpire reached the left in. foot. That's when yeah. the umpire threw the first flag on that replay. Yeah. 
So it is third and 44 as a result of that mistake. Two of them by Cotton. Obviously, he's telling him he was provoked over there on the sideline. Second man guilty frequently in football. Green drops it in underneath to Hello. Yeah, he's coming east-west. And he is stopped by Hodges. Number 37, who transferred from the Air Force Academy to Texas A&M. And here comes Cotton. Boy, is he glad to get off that bench area. <laughs> Absolutely. Get back out here. This could be an interesting point in the football game where not only is Nebraska punting, but Martinez down. Looks like he may not return, and all of a sudden A&M's got the crowd in the game and the momentum. So McNeil is back deep for the Aggies. Fair catch signal at the 20-yard line. And okay, let's check it down below with Heather. Well, I've had my eye on Taylor Martinez. They removed his tape and his shoe. And guys, as you know, that could be the kiss of death. Once you take that tape off, certainly swelling can kick right in. They want to take him back to get an x-ray. They went to bring a cart out. Taylor Martinez denied the cart and is going to walk down, it appears, to the tunnel to get an x-ray on that injured right ankle. Certainly frustrating. I talked to him during warm-ups. He was confident. He said he finally felt like himself again. He wasn't favoring it. He was moving side to side. Then that first series gets a cut. And now this, certainly not the way Martinez was hoping to start the day. Now Texas A&M looking for its first first down of the game. Tannehill off play action on the run, and they've got it. Throws to Swope. And that is their first first down of this game. Uh, they've str been struggling in the early part of this game against this man coverage. And this time they move the pocket to get away from the pressure. And Swope, who has good speed, let's see if he gets his foot down here. Boy, it's really, really close. They quickly get the snap off. The next play, and here is Gray, and he picks up a couple of yards with Osborne, the safety, making the stop for the Huskers. Not only did he get his foot down, the coverage was outstanding, but a great throw by Tannehill. And you know how it is with these up-tempo offenses. Once you get a first down, it allows you to get that tempo going. Second down and seven. Tannehill has time, going to swing it to the outside, and Gray is lit up out there. The hit by Eric Hag. Lynn, I know how much you like to look at talent that's going to advance to the next level. You want to watch Eric Hag tonight, 28 and white. One of the top players, I think, that plays defense in college football because his ability to play safety, he can play corner, and in this defense, he plays a nickelback. They ask him to do a lot, but he's got such versatility because of his speed and toughness, as you saw right there. Yards so hard to come by against this Nebraska D. Tannehill escapes incomplete. Wachaku was the intended target on that, and so Tannehill. And the Aggie offense out again, and on comes the punter. It's probably the most physical defense that plays bump coverage that you're going to face. And, and if, if you have to do a good job with pass protection. The other thing you have to do if you're Mike Sherman, have to have the ability to run the football because it's so tough to get yards on the outside. They've got two shutdown corners on that Nebraska Absolutely. team. Absolutely. I'm a Kamara and Alfonso Dunner. Now, Dunner doesn't receive the pub. That number 21 does, but the coach is telling us yesterday that uh, he's almost as good. And I was surprised to hear that, but they claim that he's a complete shutdown corner, yeah, and just like Prince. Very physical, 5'10", about 195 pounds. So Ta Taylor Martinez, this was the injury, Herbie. Yeah, and this is tough to see because he's already hurt, and his center gets pushed right back into him, Caputo. And Martinez, who was favoring it a little bit to begin with, that injury looked very serious. Only a 16-yard punt. Yeah, you, you better be on your A game if you're the punter on the other side when you have Alex Henry going at, back and forth with you at field position. Green hands it off this time, and Burkhead has checked in. So the first quarter comes to an end. Low scoring Big 12 battle. Nebraska went away from the Big 12 North title. This presentation of Saturday Night Football returns after this message of word from our ABC stations. 
The Cornhuskers drove 49 yards for the field goal and the only score. But the key fact here, Herbie, is that Martinez has left with that right ankle injury. He is out. A&M can't do anything right now on offense at this point either. So they snap off a pass and don't get a thing out of it. And it was complete because of Hodges reading on it. Tyler Reed, the target, number 25. Brent, this Nebraska offense this year is built around Taylor Martinez and his explosiveness off the zone read play. Cody Green does not have that same ability. Coming into the night, he's had about 74 yards rushing. And when you take that away, it makes it a lot easier to defend the passing game and the backfield. It's trying to stop Halu and Burkhead. Again, want to put all the pressure on this quarterback, Cody Green. Burkhead, the running back, alongside Green. And now it is third and seven coming up. He had Dustin Harris there, Herbie, defensively. I'm sorry, Brandon. He had Kenny on the slant. It looks like that's Nebraska's go-to play tonight against this man coverage from A&M. And they've had it. They've, had, they've just dropped a couple. One was dropped by Nile down, and that time Kenny could have held on to that. It would have been a first down as well. Alex Henry back to punt it. Into the end zone, and it'll come out. On the 20-yard line, well, we can take a look at our Dr. Pepper Big 12 standings, and Oklahoma State has clinched at least a share of the South title. Texas A&M with an outside chance, but if Oklahoma can handle Baylor tonight, and they had a couple touchdown lead the last time we checked, then next Saturday night, Herbie, you and I will be in Stillwater, Oklahoma State, and Oklahoma will play for the South title. That will be Bedlam. Can't, cannot say enough about Oklahoma State and Mike Gundy and the job that they have done after losing so much offensive talent, and they just continue. If anything, they're probably even more consistent this year than they were a year ago. Only 17 yards of offense for the Aggies. And deflected incomplete. And doing a fine job was Pierre Allen, the defensive end from Denver. Nebraska will bring a lot of times four and just take away all the underneath throws. What Nebraska builds their defense on is speed and physicality when they match up in man-to-man -man coverage. You're not going to see many defenses. You'll look at these defensive backs. Look how they come up tight on the wide receivers and make them work to get open. Before the snap, the flag fell. Full start. Number 80, the offense. Five-yard penalty. Second down. Prelo, one of the tight ends, will come off to the sideline after committing that mistake. It's interesting that uh, Coach Sherman has two true freshmen playing tackle. Jokel, number 76 over at left tackle, drew the start. And Jake Matthews, number 75, standing right there. Son of the NFL Hall of Famer has worked his way into the starting lineup. And there are the two freshmen, and they've got their hands full here tonight. Incomplete, and it'll be third down and 15. Right now, that battle that I talked about in the open about the wide receivers and can they be physical enough to get off the press coverage is clearly being favored by Nebraska. They're holding up on the outside, and it allows their pressure to get to them. Here's another third and long for Tannehill against his physical Nebraska defense. And Jeff Fuller, their main weapon as a wide receiver, he hasn't caught a pass yet today. Number eight. Tannehill with a protective pocket. It'll come in underneath. And that won't get it close for a first down. Amo Kamara comes up and makes the play on Wachaku. That's third down and long is becoming a little bit of a, a problem here. But look at the coverage. Watch how, if you're Tannehill and you're looking downfield, watch this. Look at the coverage, how tight it is. He has nowhere to go with the football. A&M has, or Texas A&M is going to have to do a better job with either some double moves or, again, they've got to get the running game going. Burkhead is back deep. And he signals for the fair catch at about the 37-yard line. So we'll take a break. Low-scoring game in Aggieland. Aflac. Well, there's the Aflac duck. And, Herbie, who was the last Big 12 North team? To win the Big 12 championship game, and in what year did they do it? Oh, gosh. Nebraska, of course, came away. Carl Pellini down there talking to Crick and a couple of the fellows in a tough defensive front. Helen's back as the running back.
thrown for a loss in the backfield. Gerardetti, Tony Gerardetti from DeSoto, Texas, and there are any number of youngsters from that fine high school program on this Aggie team. Well, they are really attacking Nebraska's defense right now and zeroing in on that backfield because, again, you lose that explosiveness at quarterback for Martinez, you lock in to number 10 and number 22 in the running game. Force Cody Green to run and throw to win the game. And right now, that's what AM's been doing these last few series. Pump fake. Fires deep. Got a man open and complete. And that was Niles Paul coming down the sideline, and there was daylight there. It was daylight, and they brought pressure. They brought an outside blitz, and that time Judy is caught in between, and AM caught a break there. Campbell's com coming over late. The ball sailed a little bit there on Green, but that was just a breakdown in coverage. That time Coriel Judy got away with one. Both these offenses seem to be facing a lot of third and longs. Penalty flag. Looks like DJ Jones, the right tackle, may have gotten a little bit of a head start. Ball starts. 73 the offense. Five yard penalty. Third down. And that's who it is. Very characteristic in Nebraska so far. Some some silly mistakes, you know? Yeah. Backup quarterback, and it is noisy down oh, yeah. there on the floor of this stadium. Yeah, absolutely. You got to use your eyes when you're yeah. on that Nebraska offensive line. Yeah, it's uh, his second false start of the night. Sets up a third and 17. Danger here it comes for Green in the offense. Green or a draw. Play clock. Got it off with two seconds. Inside shuttle pass against that fierce rush and that too was a good call they took advantage of that Aggie rush that time and they were able to flip it to Hello. You can guarantee when Cody Green gets into these kind of situations as you said Brent with that crowd and the hostility of this environment they're going to give him a screen a shovel pass a draw something simple to avoid the mistakes. I think Nebraska Bo Pelini feels that they, their defense can win this game they just don't want to make any big errors on offense. And right with McNeil awaiting this punt. So stay away from it. Took an Aggie bounce. We touched around the 25 yard line. Well, the Aggies have only 21 yards of offense against the Black Shirts and only one first down. Come on back and see what they do this time. That midnight yell practice. And coach came out to address the thousands who showed up. Heather, what's uh, the report down below about the injured Nebraska quarterback? Brent, I'm right in front of the Nebraska locker room where Taylor Martinez remains. Doctors just brought in x-rays. I've been told by the athletic training staff that the x-rays are negative. They just brought in some tape and scissors and are taping him up. And I've been told he is going to try to give it a go, guys. All right, thanks, Heather. Gamer, huh? Coming on back. 3-0. Tannehill saves it off the snap. And Swope, the wide receiver, and there's a fine 12-yard run with Ryan Swope, the sophomore from Westlake High School in Austin. And this is what they have to do. They've got to be able to run the football to try to get a little bit of rhythm going in this offense and try to make these defensive backs who are just locking up the wide receivers give them something else to think about because there's been a lot of passing and not a lot of running. That's a nice, <clears throat> excuse me, Brent, a nice mix up there. And he comes back and hands it off to Gray on a cutback. And he picks up nearly eight yards on that before David can bring him down. So Cyrus Gray cutting over to the right side. And maybe they found something here. And now we've got an injured Husker down on the field. And uh, that could be the safety, Gomes. Uh, he's a fine safety. Yeah. But Brent, I, I, I've been talking about it, about the importance of running the football takes some of the pressure off of these wide receivers and Ryan Tannehill. And if you think about it, these last four games that A&M's been able to win, as much as Tannehill's been getting a lot of attention, it's been Cyrus Gray and the, and the offensive line and their ability to run the football to take some of the pressure off that passing game. There's Gomes to the far right. It's like that right ankle gets underneath the Levante David as he was going down to try to assist in the tackle. Gray has had four straight, Herbie, following yeah. up on your point. 
yard games. Remember, Christine Michael broke his leg, mm -hmm. and uh, he's lost for the season. Now Gomes with a leg injury, helped off to the sideline. Interesting story about Gray. Uh, Dee and Michael are very close, and the night that the young man broke his leg and went to the hospital, Gray went and stayed with his friend throughout the night. So great friends, and now it is Gray who has had to step up his game as a running back with Junior Bradley Stevens behind him for the Aggies, and here comes a second and three. But what we have seen on this series is a little bit of change in the blocking being done by the Aggies up front, Herbie, and they're getting that running game going. Yeah, and that, that, again, that running game, you got to be able to win that battle up front where Nebraska's just been pinning their ears back and trying to slow down the passing game. And here they come again, Gray. He's got the first down, and they're starting to pound away a little bit. And now it'll be up to the Huskers, the black shirts, to adjust. And what this does, Brent, is it opens up other aspects of the Aggies' offense. And this is a good look at the pit. And, hey, they're, they're moving people around. you got two true freshman offensive tackles, a good veteran group on the inside of both guards and center. But this opens up the passing game and other aspects of the offense. First and ten, and now they're going to run the toss play with Gray. It's outside, and that's a fine nine-yard run. Got to the outside behind Michael Lamoth. One of the H-backs who led the way, number 19. Nice tight formation. It brought the entire defense in, in to the inside, and it got Gray with a little bit more room to the outside. By far their most impressive drive. Now play action, and he had a wide open Gray for the first down. And he's out of bounds near the 20-yard line. Great read by Tannehill as he rolled to the right. The back, Herbie, was wide open. When you run the football against this defense, look how things open up. This is the same offense that couldn't complete a, a pass. They start to run the football. It opens up the other side, which is a play-action pass game, and you get it to Gray for first. Now they come right back with the backup running back. That is Stevens, his first carry of the night. They're going to give Gray a little bit of a break here. He was the workhorse as they brought it down the field. That's you know, probably right back. That's probably been the biggest difference with Michael down. Michael and Gray were able to, to handle things most of the year, but once Michael went down, Gray's been carrying the load. Second down and nine. And keeping it is Tannehill. That's what he did in high school. Amo Kamara has to make the stop. That's why he wasn't recruited. And we've got an injured Aggie Wachaku is down. So Wachaku is now down. And uh, Herbie, you get the feeling up here, and we are very high here in College Station. <laughs> it's a very physical football game unfolding down below. I agree. I agree. And got to give Mike Sherman some credit for making this adjustment. It's offense had one first down coming into this drive, and now they've gotten three on this drive alone. And that running game opened it up, and even you can't forget about Tannehill's ability to run off that zone read. Let's check in to Herbie with Robert Flores in New York while they tend to the young man. All right, Brent, AT&T All-American Player of the Week update. Illinois running back Michael LaShore, a single-game school record with 330 yards today at Wrigley Field against Northwestern. Ernie Banks, Sammy Sosa, or Andre Dawson never hit 330 for the Cubs. You can text VOTE to 345-345 to take part and for a chance at a trip to the national title game. Brent. And uh, here we see Wachaku. Looks like we could have a knee or a leg injury as he goes out. Gomes has returned. Number seven for the Cornhuskers. Great striking position, and Gray can't get it. Breaks away, but uh, barely got back to the original line of scrimmage, and Gomes immediately makes an impact as he returns. He is one of the leaders of this team. It was third down and short, and you need Gomes out there to be able to come up and be able to slow this offense down, and he did exactly what he needed to do to be able to force Gray to try to have a great effort to get to the outside, but Nebraska keeps him short, and they'll attempt that field goal. Yeah, they'll go for the tying field goal here. Bullock is the kicker. Ryan Tannehill, the quarterback, has been the holder. This is for the tie, and he slips it through. 29 yards. Battle of the field goals. We got a little defense being played here in Texas to the down. I fly.
Well, of course, we asked you the last Big 12 North team to win. Herbie, I think you're honing in on this one. Yeah, I, I think it was, I want to say 03, but I know it was Kansas State against Oklahoma where Darren Sproles beats Oklahoma, and Oklahoma went to the national champion. There it is. Went to the Got national it. championship. Perfect. Area. You called the game at Arrowhead. Yes, we did. So don't get into the BCS era. I'm all over it. <laughs> You Darren go back to 1928, and I got some issues, but 2003, game on. Sprouls, he had a, just oh. a magnificent night, and I'm sure San Diego noticed that. He's still playing for the Chargers out west. This one's picked up at the 11 by Niles Paul, the wide receiver for the Huskers. Now he's going to try to cut wide, see if he can get an alley. Oh, there's a good block as... Uh, Taylor Martinez is returning, and he's putting his helmet on right now, and there is a flag on this back near midfield. Like you said, Brent Gamer, he's coming back. Impressive plan, now. Planned from that injury that he sustained. Personal foul, number 46 of the receiving team. Wow, that's uh, Eric Martin, who's one of their rush ins Correction. who comes in. Dead ball foul. Personal foul, 46. Penalty being forced half the distance. First down. Tell you what, the way this A&M defense is playing, Bo, Polino, Bo Pelini understands that that is a very important thing. And we'll see if Martinez is, is going to try to come back here out in the field. And be, if he does or he doesn't, the defense still locked in on Halu in this running game and trying to put the pressure on the quarterback, Cody Green. Since Martinez has gone out, the Aggies have played at a whole different level defensively. There is Burkhead and a penalty flag on the play. And coming up with Stephen Campbell, the sophomore from nearby Houston, threw him for a loss, but there is a penalty flag. Illegal formation on the offense. Penalties decline. Second down. Nebraska continues to self-destruct. And as good as Nebraska's defense is, one thing they cannot afford again is their own offense to make a mistake, especially down deep in their own territory like this. Play action. Green fires high and complete for the first down. A fine throw that time. And it was Kyler Reed, his third catch of the night. Here he is on the outside. Does a really good job as a tight end with good speed. He's almost like a slot type of receiver, but they put him at tight end at 230 pounds. That time, let's give Cody Green some credit. Deep in his own territory, gutsy call by Sean Watson. He puts the ball away from the defender and gives his receiver a chance, Reed, to make that first down. And then Judy was all over the receiver, Herbie, too, as Robinson has checked in for the first time. And there's a penalty flag. And of course, uh, looks like Bo was uh, all over Martinez over there, didn't it, for, uh, for a time? Sure did. Holding number 71 of the offense. 10 yard penalty, first down. That's Surles. This is it. Just offering a little encouragement there, I guess, to the young man. Wow, wow, that was... Uh, that was strange, and uh, Martinez still there, and uh, now we've got Burkhead is the running back. And timeout has been called by Cody Green. There is a penalty flag thrown by the back judge, back by the 30-yard line. Prior to the delay of game, timeout, Nebraska. So the sideline able to get the timeout called. Well, here 
here is our All-State BCS standings. The first three teams were idle. And uh, Herbie, I know you've been a little bit busy this weekend, <laughs> but I want to tell you right now, the way Boise State played defensively in 38-degree weather out there, I know they had a tough first quarter. Boys, you can play with anybody. There is absolutely. You've been saying it all yeah, year, yeah. and they were preach, really Brent. impressive. Preach, preach. I mean, their defense all year. And the more you watch Tyrod Taylor and Virginia Tech, the more you really appreciate absolutely. how they defended that uh, offense as well. So uh, it becomes really, really interesting down the road. You start to argue maybe that win against Virginia Tech early, maybe one of the best wins of the year by anybody. First down and 20 for Green and the Huskers. And now it'll be second down and 20. A little bit high to Kenny as he came across. A little bit of confusion with the underneath coverage from Texas A&M. Part of the group playing man-to-man -man and the other part playing zone. And a wide open receiver underneath. You can see where Derek Williams gets a little bit lost, but the ball is high and Kenny unable to make that play. And once again, this Nebraska offense is self-destructed. Now they got another second long. Second down and 20. And through right on the spot to McNeil right at that first down marker and the receiver had camped down right at the mark was he inbounds would be the only question here yeah, he, about it. Brent, Brent not only that but how about this is second down you're deep in your own territory second long an outstanding throw by Cody Green Broken coverage for the second play in a row by Texas A&M. He had an, a wide receiver, McNeil, all alone against that A&M coverage. First down and 10. And Burke had the running back. Here comes pressure. Burkett with a beautiful run away from it for a first and ten as he's close to midfield. Porter with the stop. Siles the left tackle, 71, gets a huge block. And when you bring pressure, you better be able to be sound with your gap responsibility. They brought a lot of pressure that time, and a safety number one, Trent Hunter, right there to make the play. But the quickness by Burkett, he's able to elude Hunter, get upfield for a first down. All of a sudden, this Nebraska offense has a little bit of rhythm to it under the green. John Watson and Green seem to have put some things together. Watson, of course, the offensive coordinator, and then when you know it, Green fumbles the snap, but alertly able to pick it up and then powers oh. his way right straight ahead. He's lucky to just get his hands back on the football and alertly picks it up, and then he, like you said, Brenny lowered his shoulder Nebraska style and picked up some yards instead of second and long or turning it over. And look at this, second and six. Looks like one of the Osborne's fullbacks. <laughs> Joel McAvick. Yes. <laughs> Cody Green, a sophomore from Dayton, Texas. Hands it off. And Burkhead breaks another tackle. He's been very tough to bring down Frederick. Had a shot at him and uh, couldn't wrap him up. I love the pursuit of this defense and his speed. I mean, he got right through Frederick, but there's Hodges again. This defense is flying after Nebraska when they run the football. Von Miller's getting involved. It started with Frederick, and even though Frederick didn't make the tackle, it forced uh, Rex Burkhead to bounce to the outside, slowed him down, and plenty of maroon jerseys there to gang tackle swarm to him. Three of eight on third down for Nebraska. Incomplete. That'll bring up a fourth down with 5.16 to go. Great pressure by Texas A&M. They brought one more than Nebraska could handle. Burkhead comes over to be able to pick up just enough of Frederick. But I'll tell you, I don't think Cody Green saw the defense. He was fooled a little bit that time by a defensive lineman that time, or at linebacker Moore dropping into coverage. 
Von Miller is something special, number 40. He brought the heat that time. Henry versus McNeil. And lets it go over his head. Takes a Nebraska hop down inside the 10 yard line. The defensive war continues. 5.06 remaining, and we're tied at three. This week on ESPN's Monday Night Football, 8.30 Eastern, a battle of the AFC West rivals. Kyle Orton will lead the Denver Broncos into San Diego. He'll mix it up with Phillip Rivers. Pretty good battle of the quarterbacks. Herbie, I was getting ready uh, with Bob Knight for that basketball game in Manhattan, and I watched Denver just bloody the Kansas City Chiefs last Sunday. I mean, that, yeah, their coach Kyle Orton Haley throws the ball pretty well. Haley didn't like it. And all of a sudden, San Diego, typical. Start a little bit slow and then turn it on. They're starting to play a lot better, too. Yes, they are. Still got a shot to win that division. Now they come back with their gray on a first down call against this front. David makes the stop again. The last time Texas A&M had the ball, they finally made that adjustment to, to running the football. It's 62 yards and or 59 yards. And one of the things that they were able to do is mix it up. They ran the ball and it set up their passing game. Early in the game, it was all about the pass, and Nebraska had that well covered. Free low is the H back back in front of Gray on this second down and long and here's a play action Tannehill's in trouble thrown for a loss back at the two yard line and Allen along with Crick they storm the Aggie quarterback well you talked about the offensive tackles being true freshmen there's a look at Matthews and he's going to be a great player one day but he's going up against a veteran and a senior in Pierre Allen who has a great speed rush off the edge and that time they were able to come after them, Jokel as well on one side, and that time it was Jake Matthews on the other. They had to try to deal with Pierre Allen. You almost get the feel, Brent, which offense could make a bigger mistake could end up costing their team a football game. Absolutely. Third and 15. Dangerous spot here. Clock running down now to two, and Tannehill has to burn a timeout. Tannehill's daddy played for Texas Tech. But when Ryan was in high school, it was a running attack. And that's how come Mike Sherman was able to recruit him here to Texas A&M. He was not offered a scholarship by Mike Leach. And so what a delight it was when he lit up the Red Raiders in that game that he started here recently. And you just know that his father, Red Raider alum, was pulling for the Aggies on that particular night with his son at the controls of this team. So here's Ryan Tannehill as you take a look at what he has done compared to what he did as a wide receiver. What an impressive young man. I mean, very athletic. You can see what he did as a receiver. One of their go-to guys. He steps in with Gerard Johnson, struggling a bit at quarterback, giving the offense a spark. But along the way, a 3-6 double major in biology and biology science. He's the total package and an outstanding leader. It's no wonder this team has really rallied around him. And who rooms with him on the road? Gerard Johnson. They remain very, very close. Third down and 15. Coming out from his own end zone now. Gets it away and tripped up his gray beautifully that time. Or he might have had a shot. David. Able to save, I think, a first down on this play. And cricket to the look at the crick at the top, kind of locks on Cray. He knows what's coming. He just can't stay with him long enough. Jared Crick, some good instincts there, but Nebraska fortunate to have the speed of Levante David, who's able to come off and be able to make this play. And if he doesn't make that shoestring tackle, it's a first down. Now let's see if Burkett can give him field position, half a field. They'll have 314 to work with. And a reminder that coming up on the Capital One Halftime Report, John and Jesse will have all the day's big highlights. Buckeyes under enormous fire at Iowa City. Pull it out down the stretch. Wisconsin with a big win up at Michigan. And Michigan State just staying alive against Purdue. 22 fourth quarter points. Those are all highlights you're going to want to see with John and Jesse. Big stories. Hello comes in as a running back now. Martinez still on the sideline. First down and 10. Two timeouts remaining for Nebraska. Hello is hit in the backfield. Oh, no, let's check that. Green off the play action kept it. And Hodges was able to hit the Cornhusker quarterback. 
That was a great read, actually, but the rest of the defense did their job to be able to contain him. Look at the number of plays with Taylor Martinez and without him. And it's not as if they were lighting it up with Taylor in there. They only put three points on the board, but once he went down, the Nebraska offense has stalled. But Green in the last series made some big throws, and because of Alex Henry's ability to punt the football, Nebraska has great field position. Green checks that wristband. Better hurry up. Bo's probably going to get a timeout here. Five seconds left. And there is the timeout call. And he is unhappy about how slow the play was coming in to the field. Well, you know, we talked about Boise State and that remarkable performance against Fresno State. And, of course, that sets up their game this Friday against Nevada. But there you have it. Only three points. They turned the ball over twice in the first quarter. Now it was 38 degrees, and one of them, an interception thrown by Kellen Moore, was deflected and a great diving catch. The second one, the ball simply came out of Helen's hand, or Kellen's hands. But how about the defense not allowing Fresno State to score off of either of those turnovers? Nine first downs, eight three and outs forced by Boise State's defense, and Pat Hill. A veteran for the non-automatic qualifiers said, we played a lot of great teams in our day and from the big conferences. We've never been beaten up the way Boise State handled us on both sides of the ball. It was something to watch and what I like, your orange uniforms. Great contrast like that, huh? with the blue field. Next you. time I come, I want to see that orange. <laughs> I can see the players. <laughs> Second down at nine now. Green. And incomplete. And there is a penalty flag thrown on the on the play. Yeah, that's a holding call on Nebraska. But Keith Williams may have got tangled up with an AM player. Holding, number 68 of the offense, 10 yard penalty, second down. By the way, if you're keeping track and you're a Nebraska fan, it's seven penalties now for Nebraska. Most of them coming on the offensive side of the ball. The number Herbie is in there. He's a freshman receiver out of California, number 18. And the go-to guy has been Kyler Reed. He's to the right side of this formation. Here's second down and 19. Has time. Intercepted. Picked off at the 34-yard line by Texas A&M. really seen the inexperience of Cody Green here these last couple of plays. First of all, the play clock running out, this time late on a throw. He was, McNeil mm. had a chance, he was late. It looks like they'll probably take another peek at that. Hunter came over to make the play, but late Watch on the, the throw. Watch the right foot, folks. Yeah, he's out was of bounds. It simultaneous. It was called an interception on the field, remember. So the booth will review it, and this is very close. Yeah, it's a matter yeah, no of no question the right foot is out of bounds but did they hit simultaneously and now the crew will come over remember in the in the college game the, re, the review booth will go back and forth and uh, and make a decision very very close well, the left foot obviously it's just a matter of did it just did it tap just before the right foot stepped out of bounds but Co my point about Cody Green and, and it's not his fault I mean it, the guy hasn't played a lot of football this year Play clock runs down. Bo Pliny has to call a timeout. Ball sails on him here. Nice Makes a poor decision. Probably should have thrown it underneath. Even though it's not a great game, at least you're not going to have a chance of throwing that interception. Yeah, that was a Trent Hunter. Now, we've talked about DeSoto. Katy, Texas is another great high school program in Texas. It sends any number of youngsters here to Texas A&M. And, uh, you know, the left foot may have touched the toe, and if it's simultaneous and they rule catch, I don't know that you can turn this over. I'm with you. And the more you watch it, watch the left foot. Just seemed to touch just before. It's tougher to see there. But the last angle, uh, it looked like the left foot may have touched. Remember, if it's not definitive, the right. they're right. not turning anything over. Right, right. Watch the left foot. Don't, right? Just a, just a hair before the, yeah. the right foot came down. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. That's, probably, that's First right. First down and in. So the young man, Trent Hunter, he's a junior, comes up with a big turnover. 
As much as anything else, that extinguishes a possible Cornhusker drive here late in the first half with the score tied at three. And the way these defenses are playing, field position with the special teams and turnover margin are going to go a long way in determining who wins this game. Jeff Fuller is being shut out by these corners. Number eight of the Aggies. Off to the top of your screen. Tannehill drops it off in below to Gray, and Gray gets over to the sideline, but the line judge says keep that clock running. He winds it. Didn't get out of bounds first before he was down. Aggies with a couple of timeouts. Gray the running back. Gray for the first down. Dives in there and that'll stop the clock here momentarily while they set up. Yeah, and this is where Tannehill now, and you know, this is about the fifth game where he's been playing a lot of quarterback. You see the clock now under two minutes. He's got a couple timeouts left. He wants to at the very least try to get the field goal range here. He's got to be able to be smart with time management. Dinner backs off of Fuller. And Tannehill's keeping this one all the way. Tucks it away with the left hand. It goes down as the clock runs. And Meredith on that defensive front, number 34, the sophomore along with David. What a good first half David has played. That junior from Miami, number four right there. Great speed on this front of Nebraska's. I mean, Jared Crick gets most of the attention, but Pierre Allen has had a good first half. Cameron Meredith as well, that time chasing down Ryan Tannehill. Pressure on Fuller at the top. Off to your left. Got a beat bump. Tannehill doesn't even look in that direction. That's how good they've come as he came back down below to Jackson. Jackson made the catch on the right side of that formation, but Jeff Fuller, number eight, the young star from McKinney, Texas. I mean, the Huskers have put a saddle on him here tonight. And you have to have a little bit more urgency here. Still have the two timeouts, but if you think you can get a first down, time is starting to become an issue. Yeah, he's just simply looking back the other way. Incomplete. Gomes comes up on that pass play to McNeil. You almost wonder if he wasn't in such a hurry, just thinking that, you know, we don't want to make a huge mistake. But I'll tell you, Gomes on one side and Haig on the other. <clears throat> For Carl Polini, they play what they consider kind of a hybrid player, a safety and an outside linebacker. They're not big enough to be a linebacker. This is Tannehill punting again. This is only the second time that he has punted. Remember, they've struggled with the with the punt game. They leave him in to punt, and it'll roll down around the 21-yard line. So how about this all-around youngster? Wide receiver, becomes the quarterback, holds on all the extra points in the field goals, and now he is also a punter. But he's a good golfer, too. <laughs> One of those guys that can I'm just do, it. Just do I, everything. I agree with you. Whatever he wants to do. could take a knee and hit the showers at three to three. Yeah. Last time they were on the road, they were trailing to Iowa State. And of course, the big story, the headline, Taylor Martinez, the Husker quarterback, was yanked out, went back to the locker room. X-ray is negative, but he caught a real earful from the head coach. So let's go down to Heather with Bo Pelini now. Brent, thanks so much. Coach, when your quarterback, Taylor Martinez, came back out on the field, you were very vocal, very animated with him. What was your message to him? Well, it was something completely unrelated to the injury. Don't, it, it's not a big deal. Who will we see at quarterback in the second half? Cody Green, it looks like. I mean, Taylor uh, got tweaked it pretty good. And is that because of Taylor's ankle or because of something Taylor's else ankle. that happened? Because of Taylor's ankle. Okay, Bo, thank you. This is the Capital One Halftime Report, and Bo Pelini discussing with Taylor Martinez where they're going to go for dinner after the game. I think he's definitely chosen what brand of food he wants to have. Wow. Yeah. And Taylor Martinez can't come back in the game, unfortunately, because of a bad ankle, although you look at that, it might not be so bad. But this is what we've seen from Nebraska this year. Solid defense, 
and their offense, you never know what to expect. This offense has really struggled to find big plays here in recent weeks. When Taylor Martinez was healthy over the first eight weeks of the season, this offense averaged at least three plays per game of 30 or more yards. Ever since Taylor Martinez tweaked that ankle a couple weeks ago against Missouri, they have not had one offensive play of at least 30 or more yards. The team that wins this game will be the one that wins the field position battle in the second half, commits the fewest penalties and the fewest turnovers. Two field goals as we look at Ryan Tannehill. The Aggies will have the ball first to start the second half. And tonight, Southwest Airlines playbook. And uh, Mr. Herbstreit, it all boils down to an injured quarterback when a center force back inadvertently steps on that already damaged right ankle. He limps off and does not return. And Nebraska has really tried to find some rhythm and it's been a little bit up and down for their own offense and it looked like towards the latter part of this, the first half it looked like Texas A&M started to get more into the running game take some of the pressure off of Ryan Tannehill and again I think these two defenses are zeroed in playing great but which offense avoids the big mistake and can Nebraska just settle in eight penalties in the first half. So the second half begins. It'll come out on the 20 yard line and uh, just to back up what Herbie was telling you as we take a look at the Pacific Life game summary you can see just how much the defense has dominated this particular game and look at third downs the Aggies are 0 of 7. Nebraska three of nine and in third down for A&M somewhere you don't want to be against a great defense like Nebraska is third down and not just third but third and long it seems like they're at third and eight or third and nine or third and twelve every time they approach that so Tannehill with play action on first down Sherman whistles up a pass and it's for 15 yards as he fires it to Swope and we check in down below with Heather. Brent, Mike Sherman's message to the team was just to continue to be patient, be persistent. He said at some point somebody's going to make a big play and it's going to break this game wide open. He was very impressed with his team's ability to defend, especially holding Nebraska to just 53 yards rushing. Now, guys, Ryan Tannehill will continue to punt for this team. Second half. Yeah, he's the third punter right now, Heather. They got a little offense going as Gray is the running back. And Patrick Lewis, the right guard, good job of coming around, picking up the uh, safety, Austin Cassidy. And first play, play action, roll the quarterback Tannehill away, and then they run the football. There's a fake, and again dumps it underneath to the running back, Gray. And as long as Nebraska stays off of him, and Osborne comes up from free safety to make the stop that time. Boy, with his athletic ability and ability to pressure a defense, get him away from the pressure by rolling him out between that and running the football. It's a nice little package that Mike Sherman has now. Second and five, and here to start the second half, the Aggies are doing some business. Tannehill's in trouble. Moving to his left, and he's going to get sacked on that play by David. He's got to get rid of that ball. Yeah. Brandon and again maybe a little bit of inexperience but this speed here Levante David a junior college transfer he's been doing this all year for Bo Pelini he continues to get better took a great angle realizing that Tannehill was trying to get to the outside and he just submerged him for an 11 yard loss bringing up a third and 17 for Tannehill Tannehill with that inside shuttle pass so the end came up field and very close to the first down, Mama Kamara, one of the outstanding defensive backs, and comes this, up. And this time, David almost comes up with it, but he got actually held there a little bit by Jake Matthews, who got away with one and gave Gray just a little bit more room. Watch Matthews right there, just got a hold of David's shoulder pad. Now this is fourth down. Remember, Tannehill is going to punt here in the second half. The Aggies used three punters. So it's fourth down and two. He's always a threat to take off, and he's going to throw on this fourth down. Can he find a man? He cannot. And 
and they turn it over, and you can't buy that decision in a game like this. Crick and Meredith bring the quarterback down, and there's no way you can justify this no. giving the Cornhuskers half a field. And Brent, this is textbook Nebraska football. This is a coverage sack. There's nowhere to go with Tannehill, and eventually he has to be able to try to make something happen. Crick ends up getting in there, but it was good coverage downfield. Look who's back. Taylor Martinez. What a lift for the Huskers. First down and 10. And he hands it off to Hello. And he is driven down by Michael Hodges. Keep an eye very closely on Taylor Martinez. Tells you how valuable he is playing on basically one leg out there. But just his leadership, a guy that they've really grown around, even though he's a freshman, he still has the ability to pull that out on his own read and can pick up yards. He was only about 80% against Kansas last week in a game that the Cornhuskers completely dominated with their defense. They denied he appeared to be better, but then he sustained still another injury, and now we have a, a penalty flag that comes from Number 78 of the offense. Five-yard penalty, second down. Martinez has thrown Herbie for 1,328 yards, so it isn't as though he can't put the ball up here with a uh, protective pocket and see if he can't get it downfield to yeah. Paul, Kenny, McNeil, Absolutely. Reed. And Brent, I think that's one of the biggest misconceptions about Taylor Martinez is people probably think that, you know, let's see him throw the football. They, coaches tell us he has by far, he's the best passer on their team. They've just been so effective running the ball, they haven't had to do a lot of passing. Four-man rush from the Aggies and throws it, and that was a strike to Kenny. Coming out of bounds is Brandon Kenny, a little bit short of the first down. So he's got Halu, and he's got Burkhead as his running backs, and he's got some wide receivers, so he can hand it off and start to move it through the air here. The other thing to think about with that right ankle is not just his ability to run the football, but when he pushes off as a passer. That time he showed great arm strength on that outcut despite the ankle. And the teeth of the 12th man. Straight back. And incomplete and terrific coverage that time by Frederick. Frederick's the young man. Had a great play in the first half, and he comes up with one here. Brent, why, and this, this is just part of his growth as a passer. Watch his footwork. He does not get his feet turned to his receiver, and any quarterback that does not get the, his feet turned as receiver, it's going to affect your accuracy. So the Huskers will punt it back to the Aggies. Here's McNeil. He changes that number when he goes back as a punt return man, and it'll be out of bounds at about the six-yard line. Defensive war in Texas. Aggies and the Cornhuskers. Get the clicker ready or get two sets. 1 p.m. Eastern. A showdown for the chase. First time it's gone to the final race at 1 p.m. Eastern. There's the three guys with a chance to win it. Now look how far back Hamlin's going to be coming from. Jimmy can get to the top quicker and lead some laps. But can he win it? What about Hamlin? Kirk asked me, and then he can work his way up. He's got to be a little bit patient, but when you're back there, Herbie, you can't get caught up in a big one because that can get you knocked off. Okay. You know, you need some cleaner air. And Johnson, the drive for five, he's got it. And here now, we see that Austin Cassidy. Now, here's a story I want to talk about this young man right here. Austin Cassidy, going to be an academic All-American. Beyond that, his father, Tim, is the director of football right here at Texas A&M. Used to work up in Lincoln at Nebraska and is he ever proud of this young man we talked about him at the Aggie practice the other day here's Tannehill now on a roll and he's going to be forced out of bounds and that was Allen in pursuit of yeah, you got to throw the football away I think as, as this game goes on here into the second half Tannehill is going to have to find when to try to make a play and when to just throw it away to try to live another down that time he's smart he's able to get some yards but he's been holding the ball a little bit too long that story about Cassidy and uh, his father Tim talked to him on the field before the game and he, he has There's such Tim. mixed emotions there he is in the glasses such mixed emotions of course he wants his son to play well and he's fired up for him and his success that he's enjoyed this year now Tannehill in trouble fires wants fuller for the first time and he's got it he's got his big man 
For the first time in this game, Jeff Fuller shows you why he's one of the best. Working against Dennard. That's 36 yards for Fuller. Brent all the way up at the top, and it's a double move. A great call here. A little bit of a hesitation, and Dennard did bites on it, and it gave him just enough room to separate himself, himself from Dennard, and a great throw by Tannehill downfield. Now, play fake. Roll out Tannehill. Likes that play in underneath. That one to Prelo, but they didn't get the first down. And you can see that uh, very aware on that play now. Osborne came up and made the stop. That has been one of Tannehill's favorite plays. Roll out and then throw to the underneath man and hope that there's enough of a bubble there that he can pick up the first down. Now you've got second down, but at least he's got Fuller. And he looks, and now he's going to run the quarterback draw for a first down. Running quarterback in high school, remember. He's got tremendous athletic ability. We've talked a lot about that. But looking off to the left, moves the linebackers to the outside. Levante David, who's been mirroring Tannehill a lot tonight, he moved off to his right to the offense's left, and it gave uh, Tannehill enough room to be able to pick up some big yards there. Osborne well, off on the Husker sideline. Lamoth is in front on the toss play to Gray. Let's see if Lamoth's got the man. And the black shirts were able to to beat the number blockers that time and gained about a yard, yard and a half. Second time Mike Sherman has gone with that real tight bunched in formation trying to get Nebraska's defense to come in tight and then try to outflank them with a good block from the tight end and bring a guard around to the outside. But to give Denard that time a lot of credit for holding the point of attack there on the outside. Mike Sherman, a veteran of the NFL Wars with the Green Bay Packers. Here comes pressure now. And Tannehill's in trouble. Drops it off. And barely got back to the line of scrimmage, depending on where they spot that ball. But Tannehill was under enormous heat. David is there. Levante David is a freak. I mean, he is a tremendous athlete. Junior college player that continues to just have a great feel, great instincts. And right now, he is completely keyed in on Cyrus Gray. Anytime there's a shovel pass or a screen of any kind, he's locked in on him and he's able to make the play. He's at third down, and they need about eight. Pick up this first down. Here comes Heat. Here's the safety blitz. Picked up. And he throws it away incomplete. Miscommunication with Jeff Fuller and Ryan Tannehill that time. Tannehill felt the pressure, saw the blitz, had man-to-man -man on the outside, and Fuller cut his route off early. I think Tannehill, and they're talking now, Tannehill wanted him to continue down the sideline. It's one thing, when you're a former wide receiver and you're playing quarterback, you know the route adjustments. You know what's supposed to happen. Here's your fourth down, and he's back to punt, remember. Here's his second punt, and the woes continue. Wow. The punting game is really a problem for the Aggies here. Hollex boots that family's been making them since 1891 and created those tall senior boots for members of the Texas A&M Corps of Cadets. And here they are tonight. Part of the 12th man. Martinez looks to the left and comes back with a flanker screen. Paul with a good run after the catch that time for about eight yards before Judy can bring him down. Usually that play is developed to get to the outside, and Paul, the ball was thrown well. It was thrown a little bit late, but he just lowered his shoulder and ran over the AM defenders instead of trying to get to the outside and use his speed. But a good gain here on first and ten for Nebraska. Still tied at three. Hello and Burkhead both in that backfield. Play action, Martinez steps back to the right, gonna come down the middle, and no. Kenny, the intended target. Intended for 
That ankle seems to be really affecting Taylor Martinez with his, his throws right now. And you know what you can't see in that picture is that Burkhead went right down the sideline and occupied it, Trent Hunter, the safety. And it gave them one-on-one -on -one matchup that they were looking for there with Judy, the corner, locked up against the bigger Brandon Kenny. But Taylor Martinez, again, will keep a, continue to watch. He's not able to throw the football. Wildcat formation. Burkhead keeps it for the first down. And there's a penalty flag, so hang on. This may go against the offense. A procedure call here. Illegal formation, offense. Five-yard penalty, third down. Brent, that is the ninth offensive penalty tonight against Nebraska. And they've had two illegal formations. Yeah. Nine penalties. Remember Cotton recovering a fumble, picked up two on one play back in the first half. Kicking and some unsportsmanlike conduct. So here's your third down and seven for Taylor Martinez. There's Cotton, he's watching from the sideline. They work a stunt, can't get there. And Niles Paul dives for the first down, looks to be a little bit short. And I think he is. Judy is up defensively. Continue to watch very closely to Taylor Martinez and his footwork, an area that he's trying to improve anyway, even if he were 100% healthy. And you can see that there's no question that the right ankle is, is affecting not just the accuracy, but the velocity on the football as well. Applaud the young man for just being out there and playing, and it tells you what their coaches think about him, Brent, with a healthy Cody Green versus what Taylor Martinez is trying to fight through. Close. Frederick. And now you can see what they need here. This crowd will be alive. They won't be able to change this play at the line. They just go ahead with that handoff. Try to follow this offensive line for this first down. Interesting call in a three to three game in a game that's been dominated by the defenses. Goal line look for the Aggies. Martinez to the left and a slick run by the quarterback. Everybody ready for him to follow the middle of the line. He steps off to the left. Campbell brings him down, but it's first and ten for Martinez and the Huskers. Good call, Brent. It's a pinch by the AM defense. They're expecting him to go right to the, or the A gap between the center and one of the guards. Everybody's inside, and Campbell fortunate to be able to make that play along with Trent Hunter. So a fresh set of downs for the Huskers. Aggies and the Huskers are tied at three. Now off the read. Hello. Breaks free. Midfield 45. And he's busted out of bounds. He's a fine run that time by Roy Hello Jr. Campbell able to bring him down, but that's a 31-yard run. Watch Ricky Henry, 74, lead the way. Picks up a nice block, but it's the toughness again, the durability and the balance of, of Halu that time down the sideline to pick up some huge yards for this Nebraska offense. But Ricky Henry really led the way that time. So that 31-yard run is so critical by Halu. Burkhead gives him a chance to catch his breath. He'll follow the fullback, and he's eaten up at the line of scrimmage. Second down and 10 coming up here for the Huskers. I think on both sides of the ball, it's a pretty nasty battle in the trenches tonight, Brent. I agree. A&M is making this Nebraska offense earn every single yard and making these backs work hard, and same can be said for Nebraska's defense. That's Eddie Brown, Jr., number 19, trying to catch his breath there. Big nose, man. Second down and 10. Play action.
margin. Martinez going to throw it down in front. And it's picked off. Intercepted by Hunter. Clint Hunter makes the pick. It was intended for Kyla Reed. And now there's a penalty flag at the 27-yard line. Looks like it was a dead ball if I read the ref's lips correctly. Interception on the play. After the play, personal foul, number 83, A&M. 15-yard penalty, first down. Now Hunter, who has made both interceptions here tonight, Junior from Katy, Texas. And Brent, this is uh, interesting by Re uh, Taylor Martinez. He looks to Reed. Reed has his man beat, but Hunter comes off of his receiver to be able to make the play. He completely left uh, Cotton all alone. Reed gets around Hodges, but I don't think Taylor Martinez anticipated Hunter coming over to be able to make that play. The crowd was a little bit mystified, even though the official announced it correctly. He pointed in the other direction. But this personal foul is against the Aggies, and it's going to bring it back by the five-yard line. So it was not against the Huskers, but this is very dangerous field position for junior Ryan Tannehill and the Aggies right here against that front. Allen, Crick, Steinkuhler, Meredith. Right behind him, David and Haig. Down to five seconds here on the play clock. They better hustle. Got to use that timeout. Tannehill's a little bit upset with the left side of the formation as he goes over. And so is coach. Hunter's ankle being checked. Big night for the defensive back. Two picks. We'll take a break. We welcome you back to College Station, Texas, home of the Texas A&M Aggies, 4.54 remaining in the third quarter. We're at the bottom of the hour. And dangerous here for the Aggies trying to come out with a first and 10 against this Nebraska D. Hand off to Gray, picks up a couple of yards on first down. Allen making the stop. I think it's worth mentioning again, not only is Ryan Tannehill making his fourth start this year tonight. This offense comes in on fire, but as this ball continues to, seems that every time A&M gets out there offensively, they're starting a drive in, in deep inside their own territory. And they're playing with two freshman offensive tackles against a pretty veteran group up front from Nebraska. His son-in-law, who was a quarterback at Nebraska, is signaling in the plays, and this one did not get in quickly. You see Tannehill searching on the sideline. Now he's got it back in the end zone. Got a hurry here. Throws it off, deflected, incomplete. And oh, is that dangerous. The pressure was exerted by Cameron Merritt. Well, this is good coverage again. Eric Haig took away the receiver to his left. See, he's completely covered. And at that point, Ryan Tannehill began to panic a little bit and tried to find another receiver that he could try to dial up. He was fortunate to find Gray. But give credit to Eric Haig that time, completely taking away the receiver that Tannehill wanted to go to. to another third down. Back at the goal line on third and eight. Tannehill gets great protection, fires for the first down on a quick slant to Ryan Swope, who's been his favorite target here today. Great job up front, Brent, with the pass protection. He had all day that time to throw the football, and he needed it to allow Swope enough time to get across the middle of that defense where that open window was. Good job with protection, and then Tannehill that time puts it where Swope can make the play. First down and 10. Here's the handoff. He's got a crease. Nine-yard gain. Good job here with the vision by Cyrus Gray. Play designed off to the left, finds the crease back to the right, and it's once AM gets out of being inside that 10-yard line, they start to run the football a lot more effectively and get their boot game going where they get Tannehill outside. He's rushed for 65 yards here tonight, coming back with more. He got another 
first down. Middle of that offensive line, Austin Cassidy up in that safety spot, number eight, to make the stop. Gray is coming out, but the coach is telling us this week that he's averaged close to 20 carries in these, these last four games. And the durability, some people question, but he seems to be a back that gets stronger and gets it more into a rhythm the more he carries it. Bradley Stevens is now the flare back. Fires back left side and up high for Swope. Incomplete. It'll be second down and 10. Eric Haig. Herbie told you how quick he is. He can play either nickel or linebacker. And he was back in pass coverage that time. Haig on one side, Gomes on the other. Akumuk Mera, 21, the corner who's a lot of Bye people game. feel top 15 pick in the go, NFL on, draft. Two, Alfonso Denard can really make it tough for these A&M go receivers game. to work free on the underneath routes. Second down and 10. Fuller has been held to one big catch here tonight. Tannehill coming back in that direction. Couldn't find him open now. He throws it incomplete in the middle, and they want interference. And there is the flag. It looked like Bradley Stevens was knocked down. Courtney Osborne all over his back. Pass interference. Number 12 is the defense. Spot foul. It is first down. Inside that first down marker, so it's not a 15-yard penalty. You'll see right here now where it yeah. came, right there. So they'll spot it. And it will be a first down, however. Now Tannehill wants to take off, and he's surrounded, going no place. Osborne in on that play, along with Allen. Allen was coming from behind on it, and it'll be second down and long here. You know, early in the year, Brent, when you watched Nebraska play in some of the games where they struggled, there were a lot of issues with missed tackles and missed assignments. These last three or four games, it's been a different defense, and especially that's very evident with the safety play that we've seen even again tonight. He checked Fuller. Denard's off him just a little bit. Looking back in that direction, then he has to come back in underneath. And that time he hit Stevens as a safety valve. And I must say that Denard has done a fabulous job tonight against Jeff Fuller. Basically has taken number eight out of this game man to man. There he is, number 15. He's out of Rochelle, Georgia. He's a junior. And it looks like they're going to do a little bit of a switch here. Third down and eight. Gray back as the running back. Here comes the safety blitz. Osborne picked up, firing in the direction of Fuller. He couldn't get off his man. Denard drew the flag that time. What a duel this has been. Pass interference, number 15 of the defense. 15 yard penalty, first down. I don't believe Bo agrees with this. <laughs> Something tells me that, uh... <laughs> you know, the A&M coaches, Brent, challenged Fuller and the rest of these receivers because they knew that, that, that might be a little bit of offense interference with Fuller working back to the ball. I think that's what has Bo Pelini fired up. But the A&M coaches really challenged Jeff Fuller and, again, the rest of this group. To, can you get away from their press coverage? Can you deal with how physical they're going to be with you? They gave them all week to think about it. It's man-to-man -man when they play it like that. Inside to Gray. Gray caught it. Great hands and a first down at the 35-yard line. Cyrus Gray starting to roll a little bit. 15 more yards. And that a, a big part of this play is drawing the outside linebacker, the defensive end, towards you as a quarterback, and then you get it underneath. Gray that time able to catch that football and pick up big yards. Now they come back with the toss play, and Gray down the sideline. Picked up seven or eight. I'm a Kamara. Number 21 out of Glendale, Arizona. Nebraska with a ocean-to-ocean -ocean recruiting strategy. If you draw a circle around Lincoln, you're just not going to have enough youngsters. So this team will go to Texas, they'll go to Florida, they'll go to California, they'll go to New Jersey, wherever they can find a good football player. And our Sony big picture of the day. And Herbie, we had some 
wonderful stories. We we start off, of course, with Illinois beating Northwestern game day. You were up there, and that was sort of an odd game because everybody headed in one direction. Buckeyes came back with that late rally, and Iowa and LSU survives against uh, Ole Miss. What what stood out for you today? What was the number one story? Uh, you know, I think the, the Big Ten race is interesting. Wisconsin really looked good again today against Michigan. Uh, and, and Brett Bielema and the Badgers continue to hope for a three-way tie, which would probably end up sending them to the, to the Rose Bowl Great. at the top of the BCS standings. Ohio State finding a way late to be able to beat uh, the Hawkeyes. Hawkeyes now four losses where they've lost it in the fourth quarter the last two or three minutes of the game it's a good football team but they they have those four losses Cyrus Gray these coaches told us how he finds a rhythm in the second half and you're starting to see that I think now here's the handoff and another first down and I must tell you the right side of this offense and that's what Jake Matthews is and Patrick Lewis is the guard over there and they're, they're doing some business over here now and they sure are Brent and also look how elusive Gray is I mean he, when you give him some room to work and to the linebackers he's making people miss and getting upfield in the process so the young tackle gets down the son of Hall of Famer Bruce Matthews now Gray came back Toward the other freshman and Kirk finally bringing him down. But finally, the Aggies are mounting that kind of drive, and we'll see what Nebraska can come up with here. Second down and five, and that is Cyrus Gray's over in the slot. Here comes the quarterback draw. Tam Hill cuts back. Back to the line of scrimmage, nothing much doing. And you hesitate like that back there, and number four is going to catch you, young man. Number four will be there. He has been all over the field, and, and I think he is locked in on Tannehill, or if Gray gets back there, his job is to be able to take care of the backs because when these line, these corners and these outside linebackers and safeties lock up a man coverage, it leaves it up to the 4D lineman and that middle linebacker, Levante David, to hold into the trenches. Well, there were football games played today in Yankee Stadium and Wrigley Field. And look what we've got after the third quarter. We got a baseball score. We're tied at three. Who's going to come up with a ninth inning home run? We'll be back for the fourth quarter after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Huskers All Access Sunday at 10. Kyle Field, College Station, Texas. And tonight's attendance, 90,079. That's a new stadium record, and here's the reason why. They put those chairs down on the track to accommodate students who did not have a ticket. And for 20 bucks, folks, you can come on in, and it's a great show with the Yell Leaders, Cora Cadets, marching band, and here we go now. Third down and five as we start the fourth quarter. Aggie's threatening, gonna try the toss play. Out of bounds, and it'll be fourth down. And we'll see if Mike Sherman doesn't settle for the go-ahead field goal right here. As an NFL coach, you would think he would do that. Interesting, Brent, they went back into the boundary near side of the field here to try to run the football to catch Nebraska off guard. If they would have run the football, you would have thought maybe they'd run it off to the right, try to get it a little bit more to the middle of the field to set up this potential game, uh, at least taking a lead for now in this field goal. Bullock could kick it. Tannehill, the quarterback, is your holder. 28-yarder. Got it. And for the first time tonight, Texas A&M leads Nebraska. So the 12th man trots onto the field. That's an honor that they hand out for every game. Walk on on the kickoff team. And here's tonight's honoree. Back into the end zone, and Paul will take a knee, and we will take a look. Hold on here a second. There's a penalty flag at the 26 yard line.
Yeah, he gave the personal foul. Yeah, he did. Personal foul, number 46 in Nebraska. 15-yard penalty, first down. Yeah, that's that uh, linebacker in rush end, Eric Martin. Well, Pelini's saying that's football. But... And we take a look. Herbie, take a look at our Pacific Life game summary here. Well, you know, the impressive thing to me for Texas A&M fighting back to now have this lead at 6-3 to three is they've had to drive the length of the field to be able to come up with their points. And really, you can see Cyrus Gray now up to 94 yards beginning to settle in and get more in rhythm and take some of that pressure off of Ryan Tannehill. Got to hold on here. They may have thrown a flag at Pelini. This might be unsportsmanlike conduct. Yeah, Hang on here. Yeah, there's a flag on the other side there, right at the sideline where he's standing. You almost need to do something at this point. He's been pretty active on that sideline. Unsportsmanlike on the Nebraska bench. Penalty being forced half the distance to the goal. First down. So already in the shadow of the goal. Yeah, he almost touched him there. He's been attacking that, that official the entire game, and finally he's had enough. 13 penalties now on Nebraska. Brigade is in as the fullback. Dangerous spot for the Husker offense. And up under center is Taylor Martinez. And they run Burkhead to daylight. Still going, battling. And out near the 40 yard line, wrestling with Stephen Campbell. But what a run by Rex Burkhead for 34 yards. 74, Ricky Henry again picks up the big block on Hodges, the middle linebacker. And I'll tell you, Brent, I think Rex Burkhead is a great compliment to the powerful Halu. He comes in with quickness, and I think that time he caught the Texas A&M defense off guard, cut it back, and accelerated upfield and got the offense out of a deep hole. A run for the coach that time, and Burkhead comes right back after that half the distance penalty. A fired up Nebraska front. Patterson making the stop for AM. Uh, that's what they had to do is take control of the line of scrimmage. And maybe some of that intensity from Bo Pelini on the sideline is working its way into that huddle. And they're playing with a quarterback that's had an injured right ankle coming into the game. It's been re aggravated. He left, went into the locker room, came back, and seems to be out there playing on one leg right now. Marcel Jones is playing at right tackle. Remember, he's been able to return here. He's big number 78. And here comes Burkhead still battling for that first down. He's definitely given his Nebraska offense a spark and talked about Taylor Martinez and, and the way it's affected more than anything. Not so much just his ability to run the option, but if Nebraska needs to throw the football, it's affected his footwork. And I think his accuracy in throwing the ball, he's not getting his feet set, planted, and heading in the right direction. And he's not been able to find any rhythm at all throwing the ball. So right now, Burkhead is kind of taking the load. Option handed off again to Burkhead. Number 22, Rex Burkhead on the carry. So they cross into AM territory near the 45 yard line. An impressive drive coming out from the shadow of their own goal. Burkhead carrying the bulk of this. To him again. Got another first down. Judy gets him out of bounds. This young man has said he's from the state of Texas, from Plano. He's basically said, let's put this offense on my shoulders here in this drive. And offensive line, of course, helping him out. You, know, you mentioned the zone read. It's not a predetermined play. The quarterback of the zone read is reading a man and determining whether to give it or to pull it out. AM 
with a, a, a gimpy ankle with a quarterback, they should be giving a read to make Martinez hold on to the football. And that time they did exactly that. And Patterson able to throw him down. And that's a big stop on first down for A&M. Usually that's the last thing you would want to see is Taylor Martinez hold on to the ball, but great play again by Lucas Patterson, who Taylor Martinez is keeping his eye on. He committed down to Burkhead, but still had enough quickness to be able to come back and help out on making a play to tackle Taylor Martinez. Second and 10. Burkhead is rushed for 67 yards. Hello for 52. Burkett is thrown down by Hodges. You can see him move in. But they brought both the middle linebackers. Derek Williams occupies Caputo, the center, and it freed up Hodges. Watch a little cross action here from the linebacker. Derek Williams right there locks it up, and there's nobody there to pick up Michael Hodges. So a great call that time by Tim DeRuder, the defensive coordinator, and the perfect time to bring that blitz. Third and eight. Fires, first down. He hit Niles Paul. What a play by the senior, Niles Paul. The ball is thrown behind him. He adjusts to the football. And not only that, he accelerates upfield and shows some of that toughness. You always want your seniors to be able to make a play late in the game when you're on the road. You need to rely on that leadership. They've been there before, and that time Paul makes a huge one. 24 yards, a first down in the red zone, just outside the 15-yard line. Here comes Burkett. Daylight on the right side. Get about four yards. Campbell making the stop. Just a great tandem with Lou and Burkett. And Burkett, it's the thing that's impressing me, Brandon, not only the big play to start this drive way back at the inside their own five-yard line, but he has not checked out this drive. He is staying out there and showing the durability for a Sophomore, 5'11", 210 pounds. Think about durability, you think of Lou. This time, Burkhead has been carrying the, carrying the load the entire drive. Second and make it seven. Martinez to throw. Can't find anybody open. Back to the line of scrimmage, and Williams brings him down, and now it is third down. And this is the aspect of the Nebraska offense that's missed right now with Taylor Martinez. Usually when he pulls it down and he's got people covered, he's a threat. Right now, he's just pulling it down, trying to avoid a major loss for a sack. That time, he didn't have any chance at all to pick up valuable yards. Now, Paul and Kenny, 24 and 84, will be on the field for this play. Third down and seven. And the line judge will stop it. And there's going to be a timeout time called. Nebraska. So the Cornhuskers will burn their second timeout here with 8.40 remaining in regulation. Aggies lead it, but only by a field goal. And that is worth a visit when you come down to College Station. Here's your third down and seven for Nebraska. Down a field goal. Broken up. Fourth down as Dustin Harris and a penalty flag comes flying. Well, I thought Dustin Harris made a good play on the ball. The only question could be, came around again with that left hand to, to knock the ball away. Did his right hand get caught up with a Nebraska receiver? There is no foul for pass interference. Fourth down. Bill Pelini not going to be happy about this. He's going to walk down toward his not-so-favorite official tonight. <laughs> Fourth down, field goal unit on the field for the tie. 
That's a great play and a great call. I agree. 29 yarder for Henry. Just want to make it clear uh, because I'm sure there's some fans in Lincoln who saw that with this one arm. It's not automatic that it's pass interference when there's contact with a hand or an arm. Did he interrupt the youngster's progress to make a catch? Can he still make that catch? What do you think, Kirby, from that angle? I, th I still think it's a great call. I think he got to the football before he interfered with the receiver. We are back with 8.30 to go, and while you were away, Bo Pelini continued to argue about the flag being picked up. He thought an interference should have been called. It's been a constant battle for Bo Pelini and the officials. I mean, he entire game he has been frustrated and his team has 14 penalties this is the latest one again I thought Harris just did a great job of coming around Kenny to knock that ball away before his right arm made contact with the receiver I think he was frustrated because there was a flag initially and then it was picked up deadlocked at six 830 to go Judy and Molina are back deep for the Aggies Running up at the 15 is Judy. And he's out to the 31-yard line. And a reminder, of course, every Sunday, you'll check out the BCS rankings. And that's going to be at 6 p.m. Eastern. So note that time change at 6 p.m. Eastern. And there is a story this week. It's going to be real interesting. I mean real interesting to see if Boise State jumps past TCU into third you would expect Oregon and Auburn to stay one and two both idle but TCU was idle and Boise State very impressive and we'll find out tomorrow at 6 Eastern on ESPN here is the handoff and Gray coach Sherman telling us that he gets better and better as the game wears on like a lot of running backs and he has really come alive here in the second half Gomes making the stop and that's new for Texas A&M just because of Christian Michael and he's sharing the load most of this year but in the last four games Gray averaging 20 carries 119 yards and that's when they found out he's just one of these backs that gets into a rhythm and really gets it going in the second half looking for 100 here Herbie he's got it and a first down and so for Gray, that is five straight 100-yard games. And that is an amazing performance as he replaces his buddy Michael, who suffered a broken leg and is out for the season. They do not expect him back for the bowl game. And AM, when they have an individual 100-yard rusher, you can see the success that they've had, and you can see what he does. But they are now 7-0 coming into this game when they have a 100-yard rusher. Play action, Tannehill. Rolls out and throws in underneath the Hicks. A freshman tied in. Continue to work the running game and move Tannehill to the outside, trying to get away from some of that tight man-to-man -man coverage of Nebraska. Now second down and seven now. You can see Fuller going in and just staying right with him is Denard, number 15. You've got to pick him up with the slot down there. You can see Fuller. Seeing that the man outside in him is back off the line of scrimmage, looking in that direction. Tannehill comes back, and he ran the slant to Swope. So Fuller helped clear it out, and they were able to get to Swope, who has been the go-to target here tonight. Well, man-to-man -to -man coverage, once Fuller takes uh, uh, Denard downfield, Swope's underneath against Haig, who's also playing great man-to-man -man coverage. But Swope's gotten, a free, he's gotten free a few times, and it seems like each time that he does, Tannehill's able to find him. That's Swope's uh, fourth catch on the night. And Swope, we're going to bring him around. And of course, the story. And Gerard Johnson, remember, he was a young man. He was a preseason favorite to win the Player of the Year award. And here he is on the sideline. His father, Larry, his late father, he was a coach over nearby Humble, died three years ago suffering a stroke when this young man was a redshirt freshman. Now, remember, he played basketball as well as football when he came to uh, Texas A&M. He's thrown for better than 8,000 yards, 67 touchdown passes, both Aggie records, and yet he had that shoulder scoped in the offseason, and he just did not come back 100%. But in watching him at practice, I will tell you right now, he's going to go to the Combine, and he is going to get a long look from an NFL team. Herbie, he has still got a real good-looking deep arm yeah. when you stand out there and watch it. Yeah, and, he, and he's handled his situation 
really, really well. Here's a guy who dreamed about the opportunity one day to play quarterback here. He had it in the middle of his senior year when he's a captain. He's replaced by a receiver in Tannehill. But Tannehill telling us, the coach is telling us this week that his number one fan and supporter is Gerard Johnson. So if he's going to make it in the NFL, it's not so much the arm strength, it's decision making. He turned the ball over a ton this year, and that's why Tannehill got his chance. He said to the reporters, I'm an Aggie through and through. I back whatever's going on. Play fake by Tannehill. Fire in underneath back to the line of scrimmage. They put it in Gray's hands again. 6.20 to go. Tied at six. Four field goals here. A Nebraska win would wrap up the Big 12 North in their last year before they move out of the conference. Third down and 11 now. Pressure coming. Trying to get to Tannehill. Trying to make him uncomfortable. And they did just enough. Right, they're going to get a late hit this time by Courtney Osborne. This will be 15 yards and a first down. Osborne hits Tannehill high. And I don't know if it's going to be the late hit, late hit or if it's head-to-head. -head. But he definitely lowered the boom on Tannehill, and the referee dropped the flag. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Number 12 in the defense. 15-yard penalty. First down. It was t the timing issue it wasn't helmet to helmet, but it was about Osborne who brought, they brought him on a blitz. You can see it's an all-out blitz. They can't pick up everybody, and that is a that is a questionable call. Yeah, I'm, all, I'm usually all about taking care of the quarterbacks, but well, as soon as he released the ball, it looked like Osborne was already in the air. Now the Aggies have the ball inside the Cornhuskers 35-yard line. And on a cutback, Gray, another 100-yard game. And again, Herbie, you know, like a lot of great backs, when Sherman told us that he just gets better and better as the game rolls on and on, we've seen that with some guys who are in the Hall of Fame. They just keep yeah. getting stronger and stronger with the more carries they get. He looks like a different guy, just a different rhythm to him. And I think the offensive line also gets it a little bit more in sync with him in the second half. He's getting a full load here tonight. Got a first down. 15. Cuts back. Inside the 10-yard line. 18 more yards for Gray. Lamont back there. Tight end who's helping out trying to pick up a block. He seals the edge and actually gets a shoulder on Jared Frick. But let's give Cyrus Gray a lot of credit here. His vision, his ability to make a cut on a dime has great quickness. And then he accelerates upfield off of the cuts. Sherman just sticking right with him. Knows how strong he gets as the game rolls on. Here he comes again to the seven-yard line and Crick with the stop. And M offense has really made some good adjustments with Mike Sherman. West Coast offensive background, but in the college ranks has had to learn to use the hash marks and run some zone read and multiple formations. Second and goal. They switch the strength of the formation. Run the toss from that direction. Gray picks his way. Five. Down to the two-yard line. Amo Kamara. The corner making the stop. Brent, you've been talking a lot about Jake Matthews. 75, the right tackle. Look at the athletic ability here to get out and to help out. And gets a huge block on Levante David to give uh, the back this time. Gray. A nice crease there to get close to the end zone. But Jake Matthews in the athletic ability for the right tackle at 6'5", 295, leading the way that time. Let's see what Sherman dials up here. He's got a tired running back. He's got a third and goal. Going to come right back with him, and he's not going to make it. You could see that he was heaving down there a little bit, trying to catch his breath before that hand up, handoff. And, of course, now Sherman will have to make a decision. And, and Brent, that's where you miss that combination. When a long drive like this, when you don't have Christian Michael, you just don't quite have that same backup with Gray now carrying the load with Bradley Stevens. And Bullock will come on. Tannehill is the holder. Made a 29 and a 28 yarder here today, and this will be for the lead. With 3.02, 
The Aggies have gone up with their third field goal of the night. But a minus stay tuned after the game for your late local news over most of these ABC stations. Over on ESPN, tune over to Sports Center for post-game analysis, all the scores and highlights. And it has been another busy Saturday. Herbie, update from Missoula. The Grizz went down. Oh, the no. great rivalry game. I told the Bobcats I'd give them high marks, and they did it today in Missoula. Montana State 21, Montana 16. That's a ball game. And for all of the while. That's a ball game. Big, Big win. 16. Congratulations to the Bobcats of Bozeman. So here comes your kickoff now. And of course, a reminder, folks, get that clicker ready. You'll be checking out the NFL. But also, go on over. The drive for 5, 1 p.m. Eastern. Can Jimmy Johnson make it? How about Denny Hamlin coming from the 37th spot on the grid? If he wins or finishes second and leads the most laps, he will have stopped the Johnson streak. Kevin Harvick still with an outside chance from Homestead. Greatest chase in history. Last time it's gone down, first time it's gone down to the last race. Here we are. We've gone down to the last three minutes. Aggies lead it. Burkhead back in again as the running back. Martinez has time, drops it off to Burkhead. Six yards and out of bounds. Miller, Vaughn Miller, one of the fine linebackers. And Herbie told you earlier today that Tim DeRoyter, who came here from the Air Force Academy, switched to that 3-4. Fellows like Miller and Hodges and Porter, they make this all work. Nebraska's offense not necessarily built for these kind of occasions, especially with a quarterback that's struggling to throw the ball. That time he gave Burkhead a chance. Burkhead short of the first down. They're basically challenging Taylor Martinez to throw the football. Nine guys up close to the line of scrimmage to try to stop this Nebraska running game. Martinez is going to have to make a play with his arm if Nebraska is going to be able to stay in this game. Third and two. Martinez throws for the first down. Snaps it to Kenny. Time he actually got some pretty good zip on that football. And Kenny with a big body, 6'3", 220 pounds, uses his body to shield the defender and make the catch. And him walking a lot of their coverage up tight, trying to force Martinez to get the ball thrown downfield. Quarterback draw, but he can't move. And now he throws it as he's going down. That was Von Miller, the star, in on him again. Young man from DeSoto, Texas. What a great high school program. And there's the penalty. And what is that, Herbie? About 16 yeah. against Nebraska? Most of them coming against this Nebraska offense, Central too. Grounding. Number three, the offense. Fred, this is a classic down. case for fans. Yeah. They'd say, well, he doesn't have a lot of sacks, whoever you might be talking about. Vaughn Miller makes this play. He just comes right up the middle. A great scheme. Burkhead can't handle the power and the speed of Miller. He doesn't get a sack in the stat book, but he makes a crucial play for this AM defense. Second and 15. Kenny again well short of the first down. Herbie, I think this is one of the loudest venues in college football. I'm with you. It's, and when AM is winning, I don't think there's a better venue. These fans stand up the entire game. Again, they do such a great job in moving him around along with Demontre Moore. Great speed off the edge. That time they overpowered Nebraska with power and speed. And Taylor Martinez had nowhere to go with the football. The crowd will tell you the story. Here is fourth down for Nebraska.
on the road, and your offense is dealing with a quarterback who's been the entire offense the whole year, and he's playing on one leg, it makes it tough to execute. Fourth down and long, and they throw it up. McNeil actually makes the catch, obviously, but he's, he's out of bounds. And Vaughn Miller dialed it up that series. He really brought the pressure that time, and Taylor Martinez often feeling the heat from Vaughn Miller. There is no formation like the victory formation. The underdog Aggies. Of course, stay tuned for the Ford wrap-up after the game. And a reminder, fans, log on to the bcstailgate.com for your chance to win the ultimate tailgate, F-150. So all the highlights and scores will be coming up. And let me remind you, that Nebraska has a home game in Lincoln Friday. If they win that game, they'll still win the North. Here's Pelini. Pelini's looking for the officials. There ain't no question that Pelini was headed out to the officiating crew. Then he'll go over to Coach Sherman. He's going to be hot a long time. 16 penalties against the Huskers and two against the Aggies. So Ryan Tannehill remains unbeaten as a starter. And now some handlers are getting Bo safely off the field, which is what they should do in this situation. Get the Nebraska coach back inside that locker room. The Aggies have won five straight games. They are now sitting at five and two in the conference. Oklahoma State has wrapped up a share of the South. They'll play the Sooners in Bedlam next week. Start thinking about this job that Mike Sherman's done this year after losing three in a row and the last the last of those losses to Missouri where they just didn't show up. To think now they've won five in a row. They've got Texas next week and a chance to win nine games and go to a pretty good bowl game. Mike Sherman's starting to build a pretty solid foundation here in College Station and for Nebraska frustration sitting there at nine and two a year where they thought they could have an outside shot to make it to a Big 12 championship and into a BCS championship game. Tannehill gets a lot of the credit but tonight it was about the defense and Cyrus Gray taking over in the second half. team too. Texas A&M has about five seniors who play a lot of football so this guy will be back to be their quarterback next year. Let's go down to Heather with the winning coach Mike Sherman. Thanks so much coach. Congratulations. What a defensive battle. Ultimately in your mind what was the difference? Um, well I tell you our guys have a tremendous will to win and I do think these students here setting their record pretty loud during the game and caused some uh, communication issues for them but uh, can't say enough about uh, our students and what they did and our 12th man and uh, and our team I'm real proud of them coach you guys had lost three in a row now you have won five in a row you changed your quarterback how has the personality of this team changed well I don't know if it's changed necessarily they got a little more of a swagger than they had when we started this thing after we lost to Missouri on the same field we weren't feeling too good about ourselves but uh, we didn't hang our heads we just kind of went back to work so let's go. Let's go get the next one. And they've done that five straight weeks. Congratulations. We'll let you enjoy with this 12th man. Friends? Heather, nice job. No student body enjoys its football team. Quite like Texas A&M. Now the stands will start to sway. There's nothing like it. The Aggie wore him. For watching ESPN on ABC. Now we're going to take you to Times Square for the Ford wrap up. Take it away, Robert Flores. What a night in College Station. <laughs>